The modulus function or absolute value is all about positivity. Let's get into it. So the definition is the modulus or absolute value represents the distance of a value from the origin. Okay, so the modulus of a value is denoted, denoted by these two lines or also known as two bars. Okay, so let's look at an example to understand this concept. We see that on a line, we have to find the modulus of 2 and minus 2. So what we would do is draw the line, find the origin, and locate what we are trying to find the modulus of. So in this case, 2 and minus 2. All right, so we see that if we were to draw the line, we would see that 2 is 2 away from the origin and minus 2 is 2 away from the origin as well. So although one is positive and one is negative, the modulus value would be the same. All right, so a more, a more formal way of saying all of this is this. So we know that the modulus function is denoted by these two lines. So the modulus of x is equal to x when x is greater than 0 or also positive, right? So greater than 0 means it's positive and less than 0 means it's negative. So it stays positive if it's positive already. If it's 0, it stays 0. However, if it is less than 0 or negative, all we do is make it positive. So it's like a filter for negativity. If something negative goes in, it's removed by the function. The modulus function removes that negativity and makes it positive. All right. So in summary, when x is greater than zero, nothing happens. It stays positive. If it is already zero, it stays zero. However, if it is a negative number, we have to make it positive. Now I want you to pause the video and try these questions using all the knowledge that we learned in the past two minutes. Now let's do them together. The first one is the modulus of zero. And if you recall, I said if it's zero, it remains zero. So that one is done. Number two, what do we spot? A negative number. And the modulus function makes it positive. All right. So the negative seven, the modulus of negative seven is seven. We just took away his negative sign and we put it as positive and we left it as seven. So number three, it's already positive. So he's free to go. He doesn't need to go through security. He's good. All right. And number four, negative 21. We need to strip away his negative sign because in the modulus function, we don't take any negativity here. So it is 21. Sketching the graph of a modulus function is very similar as to how you would do it for a normal linear or quadratic. What you need to do is find the values for x and y and then plot them. So let's look at y is equal to the modulus of x. The first thing you need to do is get a range of values. So we'd usually go from minus 2 to 2, um, basically having some negative and some positive and of course our origin. So the first thing we would do is plugging all our x values to get our y values. So we know that the modulus of minus 2 is 2, minus 1 is 1, and so on and so forth. So now that we have our x and y values, our ordered pairs, we plot them. Okay? Now we can see that no portion of the graph is below the x-axis. So none of these are negative values, right? So we know that all the y values that came out of this are positive and that is why none of it is below the x axis okay now another way to obtain the modulus graph of a function is to reflect the negative portion of the graph in the y axis all that means if it, if anything goes below this x axis anything below this region we would have to reflect it above like this so you can see that this line went below here and all we did was put it up like this of modulus. The first one, the modulus of x is greater than or equal to zero. So that means that greater than or equal to zero means that it will always be positive. All right, so we went through that before, so I know you all understand that. The second one is the modulus of x is equal to the modulus of minus x or negative x. 
So we can see the modulus of 2 is equal to the modulus of negative 2 by that rule, right? So we know that the modulus of 2 is equal to 2, and the modulus of minus 2 is equal to 2 as well. And that's why we can say that number 2 is, in fact, a rule. The third one is the modulus of a product is equal to the product of the modulus. So we use number 3 and 4 to make it simpler for us to solve. All right, so we use them to separate to be able to solve them easier. The fourth one, the modulus of a quotient is equal to the quotient of the moduli. So you can see all we're doing is pretty much just separating them, splitting them up, splitting them up to be able to make it easier for us to solve them in the end. All right, the fifth one, very important, the modulus all squared is equal to x squared. Very, very, very important. You need to know this one. All right, simple as well, but nonetheless very important. Number six, the modulus of x is equal to a can be interchanged with x is equal to plus or minus a. All right, so remember x and a are just placeholders. Let's look at this example. If we were given the modulus of x plus one is equal to seven, that means that x plus one is equal to plus or minus seven. And from there, we can equate it to 7 and minus 7 and then solve for x. So we have two solutions to this equation. All right. Solving modulus equations. Now what we're going to do is look at all the rules that we learned before and apply them to be able to solve the modulus equations. So the first one, example one, it says to solve this. So what we would do first, we we'll remember law number five. If we were to square both sides, we would be able to just get them like this. And from there, we expand both sides and get the value for x. So I do all my work in. I always do all my work in because I feel like I could always make a mistake. I recommend you do it as well. However, if you are a mental math boss, then I highly recommend as well, do whatever you feel most comfortable with. So all we did here, square both sides apply this rule and then simplify to get our x values example two says to solve this equation so remember what i said about rules three and four we use those to be able to simplify to be able to solve them easier all right so recall this one the modulus of a product is equal to the product of a modulus number three right yes so all we use this for is to split it up to make it easier for us to solve. So what we did was split this up into these two, all right? So from this whole modulus, we split it up into two moduli, all right? So it's equal to one. Now what we can do is move this to this side. So of course, one multiplied by the modulus of x minus three will be itself because anything multiplied by one is equal to itself right now from there we will square both sides just like we did before in example one and we will solve for x normally inequalities and the modulus function so we have four symbols here and we need to know the meaning of each the first one is less than the second one less than or equal to greater than and greater than or equal to. Now, how do we remember which one is which? That's where our friendly neighborhood dinosaur comes in. Dino is going to teach us these symbols. And how is he going to do that? So Dino is a very greedy dinosaur. He only eats what is big. He only wants what's really huge, juicy he just wants a lot of things okay so as you can see dino's mouth is shaped just like these inequality symbols so dino is going to want everything that is more all right so dino's mouth is going to face towards what is greater so if we had number one and number two dino is going to want what is bigger and number two is great bigger or greater than one and that is why dino's mouth will face that way all right so if we had two and one dino's mouth which is our inequality sign 
is going to face towards the two and it's because it is greater all right so that's how we're going to remember it so let's just say three and four dinos wanna gonna want to eat four and that's why his mouth will face four all right so that's how we remember these signs now let's go on to the rules that we need to use to be able to solve the inequalities so i just want to pause want you to pause this video and learn these because we're going to use them now solving modulus inequalities we're going to look at two examples to try to understand these inequalities better how to solve them so we're given an example one to solve this inequality we're going to start off by squaring both sides when we square both sides, we can then apply this law to get rid of the modulus entirely. From there, we're going to expand the left-hand side, get a quadratic, and then of course we're going to want to bring our 4 over on this side. Alright, now we have a quadratic, we're going to factorize to get this. Now, this is where our favorite part comes in. We have to sketch this graph. To be able to sketch this graph, what we're going to do is find the roots. So we know that the roots will be x is equal to 5 and x is equal to 1. All right, so what we did was equate both of these to 0 and then solve for x to get the roots of the equation. And that will be our x value. So like where it will intercept the graph on the x-axis, okay? That's why we need to find the roots. Now we need to know if it's going to be positive or negative, all right? So basically, positive, I said positive because it's a smile and negative because it's a sad face, right? So basically, we need to know if it's a maximum or minimum. So if the coefficient of x squared is negative or sad, it will have, it would be a maximum, all right? So a maximum curve means it has a maximum point. And this one is a minimum curve, which it has a minimum point. That's why we call it that, right? So if the coefficient is positive, you'll have a smiley face and a minimum point, okay? So what we do is look at the coefficient of x squared. We know that it's 1 because if there's no coefficient there, we know we have to just assume that it's going to be 1 because 1 multiplied by anything is itself and that's, that's why, right? So 1 is positive. And because it's positive, we know that it will be smiley face and a minimum point, right? And that's why our graph is drawn like this. So in this region, the function is less than zero. So that's why we get to put this notation because the region is connected, right? So that is how we would solve that question. Example two states to solve this inequality. So this is greater than or equal to. The first thing we're going to do is, of course, write down the inequality we need to solve. From there, we're going to try to simplify it as much as we possibly can. So we can move the 4 over on this side, get 6, divide 6 by 2, and we would end up with this simple thing. Now we need to remember this, and from here, we know that x will be greater than or equal to y, or x is less than or equal to y. So we have our two solutions. All we need to do is simplify and get an, a value for x. So we move this over on this side. x will be greater than or equal to 4 or x will be less than or equal to minus 2. And that's how we solve inequalities with the modulus function. Now on to our favorite chapter of the video, past papers. This one we're going to do 2021. Right, so this comes from 2021 and it tells to solve this equation. The first thing we're going to do is use the modulus definition. So that means to remove the modulus function, all we do is make this side positive and this side negative. So we need to solve these two sides separately. Let's do the left hand side first, the positive side first, okay? So we're going to get our quadratic. And now we're going to use the quadratic formula to be able to find x values. So that's all what this is about. So we found the two x values. And now let's move on to the right hand side or the negative side. So here we're going to do the exact same thing, but make sure that you do it well. Remember, this has to be negative 3x and a negative and a negative is positive. So this will be positive 2. 
So do not forget that. Remember, you have to distribute them properly. All right? So now we apply the quadratic formula once again to get our x values. So in total, we have four x values. However, the, re the rule is the modulus of x is always positive. So we need to find what values are positive because the negatives will not count. So to do that, we're going to substitute them into the right hand side. So we have to substitute all these values into the right hand side of the equation. All right. So we substitute all of them into this. Now we're going to get the values, see if they are positive or negative. If they are positive, yes. If they are negative, absolutely not. They will not be a solution because they must be positive to be a solution. So now we know that we have these two x values and that is our answer.